Well, a great summer year is behind us. On all count, Indian markets have got re-rated. But what should we expect from this summer year? Now that earnings season is over, inflation is looking slightly toppy, and global factors are looking stable. Are we in for some stellar gains, or markets are likely to consolidate in the short term because liquidity is a big concern? To understand some individual stocks and where is value in this market, I have the perfect man, Ravi Dharmishi. Uh, one of the smartest stock picker on D Street. Ravi, fantastic to have you back and thank you for joining us. Thanks, Nikonj, and wish you a very happy Diwali. Thank you and uh, wish you the same. Uh, for the moment, it appears that uh, markets are in a mood to take a Diwali break. Mm, actually, uh, the break has been anticipated since a while, but it's not been coming. So think of it, uh, if you had asked me six months back, uh, uh, I would have bargained for a fractured mandate in the government. I would have bargained for a, um, you know, slightly depreciating in an orderly fashion currency. I would have bargained for a uh, range-bound crude, but it has fallen. Uh, I would have bargained for a 6% CPI by 2015 December, but probably it might come in December 2014. I would have bargained for GST in 2016. Looks like this winter session might have GST bill. So. Each and every factor is actually turning out to be uh, way better than what our anticipation was. Surely, earnings cycle hasn't yet picked up uh, across the board. But macros are falling in place. These are the lead indicators. And I don't think in such kind of a scenario, you can have a big market crash. 5% market corrected and it's way back up again. Let's talk about the recent government action. Everyone is gung ho. Diesel prices have been deregulized. Coal mining... Uh, by private companies will be a reality. How important are some of these events? Because so far, Coal India or a ONGC or a BPCL or a Reliance, the stocks which are the affected stocks have not moved. So I have a very uh, limited uh, investing life, but in this limited investing life, I have never seen such kind of clarity from government about what kind of steps they are going to take. It, I mean, finance minister said that it's cast in stone that oil reforms are not going to be reversed. They are very sure that reforms are going to happen from now till budget. Step by step, each and every uh, bottleneck is going to be um, removed. So, I mean, it's an uh, investor's delight. It is, uh, we, we get goosebumps uh, thinking about the possibilities. So, we are very happy. Mm. For a marathon runner, I guess there is no problem. But the problem is that if you're a sprinter, do you think there could be a problem for a sprinter? And do you think somewhere valuations and markets have run ahead of themselves? I am not a sprinter, so I will not be able to comment. Uh, and I think sprinters might miss the forest for the trees if they try to focus on the next 5%, 10% kind of move. Because a fantastic mandate combined with an entire country's mindset for reforms and uh, a catalyst in, in the shape of government who is willing to take those kind of steps. We have not had that, uh, this kind of uh, scenario in a so long time. So we are time. in a very sweet spot, not just a sweet spot, but a dangerously sweet spot. Yeah, I mean, I mean, dollar, I mean crude being at 85, I mean, we, we would have given an arm and a leg for this, and it is a reality today. Okay, let's talk about earnings and if I look at the big sectors which you like and which we've discussed several times on this forum are IT and pharma. If I look at the headline numbers which we've got from IT companies, barring Infosys, nothing great. Lupin, Dr. Reddy, none of the companies from the pharma space also have surprised us. We continue to remain very bullish on both these sectors. Uh, it is not a e very even uh, call that each and every sector, uh, sorry, each and every company within the sector might do well. We had only large cap IT doing well. Mid caps have maybe very selectively done well. Even in pharma, it is a very stock specific story. But the macros driving the sectors, uh, I don't think there's uh, been a big damage per se. There is some slowdown in uh, global IT spending. There is some uncertainty, company specific level. But overall, I think 14-15% uh, kind of a growth with a stable margin scenario I don't think there's too much risk to that in IT as well. On the pharma, it is a selective. Uh, it depends on your product pipeline, launches, how you are positioning yourself. So it, it has been an evergreen sector and we believe you might 
move from one stock to another but as a sector it's it will continue to do mm. well so your core holding in pharma is still orbindo pharma natco pharma orbindo natco we have added sipla uh, that's a new idea yeah sipla has been a new idea and there's a small company called maxens i think that we discussed last time so those are the stocks in uh, pharma that we okay like. so i'm going to spend some time uh, and discuss sipla with you because that is your new idea and our viewers are always hungry for new ideas uh, what makes you suddenly so bullish on sipla because sipla is not a discover i mean it is it is a very old stock so sipla has been through a five years of consolidation there has been a top level management change uh, due to the demise of the previous md and uh, there was a stated policy of by sipla not to go and address the us market for whatever reason we'll not get into that but now that has changed now there is a stated policy to attack the regulated markets the about a month back they got uh, approvals for uh, inhalers in uh, germany and irish market if i'm not wrong uh, and that is a, a precursor to the opportunity that they are going to address in the inhaler space this is a us plus europe combined 20 billion dollar opportunity and this can convert potentially into a billion dollar of generic sales for sipla over the next 5 years but sipla years. has been in the inhaler business for the longest time i can remember so what is so great about it now not in the regulated markets not in the regulated markets edwer and simbicort are the two drugs combined and there are some other smaller ones as well they are that's a 20 billion dollar market op- which is opening up now Okay. which has not addressed previously and sipla is the strongest in the inhaler in the respiratory are you happy to own sipla for next 3 years i think uh, it would be a mistake not to own sipla uh, sure the valuations from a near term earnings point of view might have run up a little bit but uh, we are very sure from a 3 year 4 year point of view the probability of making fantastic absolute returns is very high in sipla when we discussed maxens pharma with you last time i mean that was early august the stock was at 50 152 today i checked it has moved to 60 plus are you still happy to own it we continue to own it it's a it's a small company it's a promoter that is hungry to perform um, it's it it's it has had its own uh, problems with bifr and it is coming out of a very problematic place now i think they are also in a sweet spot where they are addressing the otc uh, uh, generic market in us and that's a space which is not very very competitive it's a small space but it is large enough for them to be able to grow to a 2 3000 crore kind of a size from the current 5 600 crores you never give me a price target but for maxens do you have a price target no we as long as i can see a absolute return greater than 30 40% I mean, I'll continue to hold, and we'll we'll evaluate how the uh, scenario is panning out. Right now, it looks all good. We've discussed Infosys in the past, and market men are mighty excited uh, after their Q2 numbers. Everyone is of the view that uh, Vishal Sikka has some magic wand, and he will be able to spin things around. Uh, is there some degree of misplaced optimism in Infosys? So, uh, see, Infosys falls into the category of. Uh, companies that can turn around it is still a hope trade it's a hope trade it's a hope trade that is why you buy it when the valuations are cheap uh, so at 4000 our valuations there cheap? is no guarantee that the turn around will happen but are the problems uh, cyclical or structural there is no balance sheet issue it's not like they cannot repair their balance sheet it's a growth issue it's about getting the culture right issue and uh, right noises have been made if the valuations are in your favor i would say place a bet if it turns out it will be a fantastic multi bagger with very low risk mm. so uh, i mean i don't see an issue with that you can lose 10 20% or the opportunity cost of your money if it doesn't perform how soon do you think they will be able to get their mojo back because as of now vishal sikka is trying to fix the problems he has identified the problems but for a company which is a you know 6 7 billion dollar company things will not uh, change in a quarter or so i would give it uh, at least four quarters at before least i start quarters. uh you know taking them to the task about uh, not getting their act together or something But i guess uh, today only there was some uh, talk about them being open to acquiring a company of 600 700 million dollar size that's a change in mindset so there is a huge cash balance which is lying and which is uh, suppressing the roe i'm sure the actions will be taken to uh, bolster shareholders returns as well hmm. so 
for someone who's watching this conversation, your advice is that if you genuinely want to buy Infosys, at least buy it for next four quarters. I would say, I mean, I would say buy it for next three years. <laughs> I don't have but no at clue. At least one quarter, at least one year. Yeah, at least one year. You have to give that much time. You, you, if by if the end of the fourth quarter, you should get a sense if things are panning out uh, as expected or no. You don't need to sell after four quarters. Then you can reevaluate. I'd like to draw your attention to what is happening in the commodity market. And commodity prices have just melted. The super cycle in commodity, finally and thankfully for us, has come to an end. So how will life change for Indian companies in the next two quarters? Because the benefits would kick in now. Yeah. So this quarter might not have completely capture the benefit of that. Next quarter is going to be key. Uh, we are an importer nation. We are a consumer uh, oriented economy. Definitely we are going to benefit in a big way. As uh, someone else was saying, suggesting, a $25 uh, fall in crude is like a $10 billion stimulus for Indian economy. So uh, all power to Indians. Who Are you will betting on any commodity consumers because the ultimate beneficiary would be maybe autos, car companies, battery companies, white good companies. Are you playing that trade? So we have not initiated any fresh trade based on that. But there are companies in my portfolio already who I know will are going to be beneficiaries of that. For the longest time you've been owning Amra Raja batteries. Yeah. Are you happy to own it? Absolutely. I mean I think uh, the company can still go ahead and uh, deliver a 20-25% CAGR in earnings even from here. They are they had just embarked on a, uh, their life's biggest capex um, which they have just completed and the benefits of that are going to accrue now. Exide had lost out. They lost the market share in the replacement side. Their strategy on the pricing front was questionable and Amar Raja has taken advantage of that. So I believe uh, Amar Raja when we bought it was a credible number two player. It is very close to becoming the leader in the segment. I would not be surprised if in the next three years Amar Raja is the leader and Excite is the follower. What was the last big acquisition in the mid-cap space? MCX. Uh, MCX is, I think we discussed briefly last time around. Uh, exchanges are wonderful businesses. They have 50% plus margins. No one building where uh, essentially your servers are kept and uh, you would collect uh, money on each and every trade that is executed. Credibility. Credibility of MCX numbers. They, they are the most credible. I mean, it has gone through an existential crisis and uh, PwC has audited them. A new owner has bought. Whatever numbers are there right now is after all the kachra has been removed. So whatever is left is as pick and span I, is what my presumption is at this point of time. I could be wrong. But uh, they have 1,000 crores of cash on their books. So 4,200 crore market cap. I mean, if I had to give you an analogy, it is like buying a national stock exchange in the early 90s when it was still in a development phase. Commodity markets are not open to the financial institutions or FIIs or there are no products beyond one month or options. There is, there is so much development that can take place. Now you have a vehicle that has survived all adversities and it is in the hands of a very good promoter. But MCX is unlikely to report great quarterly set of numbers. Do you think in the short term the stock could be volatile? Stock can be volatile. I have no way to suggest that. But what recent trends have been that they have gained market share and the volumes also have improved from a very, very low base. So I, even over there, the uh, indicators are that it might not be so bad as well. Hmm. World has suddenly woken, woken up to Made in India slogan and that really could be a big opportunity. Uh, as an investor, how are you milking this opportunity? So it's funny that uh, we already had stocks in our portfolio and then when we see it, oh, this fits into the Make India category, this fits into Make in India category. It's not like we, we have started looking for stocks based on Make India category. For example, I'll tell you there's one stock called uh, Kitex Garments. It's an exporter of uh, infant wear. Uh, textile has been doing well, especially, especially the garment side, since few quarters now. But Kitex Garment is one specialized infant wear company. And uh, I think it falls right in the lap of uh, Make in India theme. The stock has gone up from 50 to 500. You still like it? I think it can uh, give fantastic returns even from here. 
to give you an example, Page Industries is quoting at a 10,000 crore market cap with a FY14 PAT of 150 crores and expected PAT of 200 crore in uh, FY15. Uh, this company will transform itself from an uh, infantwear garment manufacturing company supplying to the uh, Gerber and Walmart, uh, Walmarts of the world to having its own brand over a five year period. I don't know if they will succeed, but if they do succeed, then uh, in five years time, this could be a company with 200 or 300 crore kind of profits and entire brand sales. But isn't that a risk? With Page Industries, there is no risk because all you're doing is you're simply sell, selling uh, uh, the, the, the franchise value. With Kitex Garment, there is experimentation. Everything is a risk. Everything is a risk. And I, I would not say that there is no risk. Stock is expensive as well. But uh, we have lots of uh, conviction and belief in uh, promoter Mr. Sabu Jacob. And I, I think he knows his game better than anybody else. And he is very confident of uh, achieving that. So we would like to stick around and see if things are panning out as he says. Mm. Let's talk about banks and especially private banks. And again, private banks have demonstrated that why they are best in the breed. Numbers from ING, Vyasa, the kind of numbers we've got from HDFC Bank, they are exceptionally strong in a difficult quarter. Uh, do you think private banks still merit a buy? So the last time around, if you remember, in the previous uh, down cycle of CAPEX, which was I think from 97, 98 to 2001, the public sector banks lost out in a big way because of the lack of funds. They are in a similar situation right now. Public sector banks are going to struggle for funds when they, and they are looking to get their house in order. And private banks have their house already in order for more, more or less. They, nobody is in need of huge funds at least. And uh, the NPAs have tapered off. But now valuations on your side, if you're buying an access bank, you're buying a, a stock which is trading at a price to book of three times. You're buying HDFC which is trading at a price to book of four times. ICICI bank price to book of about two and a half times. So private banks may be a great franchise, but are they worth the price? Absolutely. I think uh, it will uh, appreciate even from here. The ROEs at this point of time and ROAs are probably somewhere between 1.5 and 1.7 ROA and 15 to 17% ROE they will improve further with growth, the costs under control. And with improvement in those ratios, the price to book multiple can expand further from here. And they are going to take away market share from the public sector banks. So if economy revives, there could be a valuation arbitrage with PSU banks, uh, you know, having one round of uh, appreciation. Yields are also coming down, so PSU banks could go up because they will hit their jackpot if yields go down. Yeah, I, uh, but my call is more three years, four years, and I would rather not depend on interest rates coming down and economy picking up. These guys will take away the market share, and if economy reverses, they'll also benefit anyway. Mm. If I look at the current market behavior or the fabric of the market, uh, money clearly is migrating towards quality. It's no longer beta, it's no longer real estate or metal names. Do you think that will be the theme going forward? Only focus on quality. Don't try to be a bargain hunter just because stocks have fallen. Uh, you are right. Actually, it has been a nightmare market, believe it or not, for anybody apart from a long-term investor. For an intraday trader or for a, even a positional trader, it's not been easy. It's not been a uh, gaga bull market where you put your finger on something and it goes up. You have to get your stock selection right. Gas prices went up, Reliance did not benefit. ONGC is also is down from the price from the day it was announced. Coal reforms have happened. It's not like uh, there is a mad rush. The beneficiaries of these reforms can be found in unexpected quarters. Uh, crude price falling, the beneficiaries could be Consumer durable companies, for all you know, as I said, that it is a stimulus to the consumers. So it is, uh, it does require some amount of uh, uh, filtering and picking the right stocks. So it has been a stock picker's delight, and I wish it stays like this a little more longer. But my sense is that this might change, and uh, we might get a macro trade pretty soon. As uh, from now to budget. There is an expectation that there will be lots of reforms being announced. Mm. A lot of our common friends are of the view that a structural and inevitable bull market has started. 
So if you also believe that a structural and inevitable bull market has started, I'm sure you've got a core portfolio in place. So what are the three stop, stocks which are part of your core portfolio? Nikunj, first of all, if we are debating whether this is a bull market or structural or cycle at 8,000 Nifty, that is the most wonderful piece of uh, news. I mean, that means there is still skepticism about it being a bull market. There is. I mean, the, the FN data is indicating that so there is hardly any I don't know what it will take to convince people that this is a structural bull market. Uh, I mean, to each his own. But to uh, coming back to uh, your point of... Uh, what was your point? The core holdings. Uh, core holdings, yeah, right. So, again, I am not going to take any investment decision, decision based on one particular event, whether this government comes or that government comes. It has to be a quality company and it has to be available at a good price. So, Supply is one that we have bought currently and uh, I believe that is a, de definitely deserves to be in the core holding from this point on. There are some that we are holding since a while, Aurobindo Pharma. HDFC Bank, Infosys, United Spirits, I think these are the stocks, if they are in your core portfolio, do not touch them. Let them be for five years. I wonder what surprised. makes you so bullish on United Spirits. I looked at the Q4 numbers, big write-off. I looked at the Q1 numbers, EBITDA has come down. The market share has not gone up. Uh, what makes you so bullish on United Spirits? Because you are talking about the past, you are not talking about the future. Uh, and no, I won't say that there will be no write-off at all in the future. There can be further 1,000 odd crore of uh, write-off because they have not recognized one particular uh, receivable from UBHL. Um, so, uh, see, India is a young country. The culture of uh, social drinking is just beginning. And everybody moving higher up the curve in terms of, uh, you know, the branded liquor spirits is catching up now. And... Uh, this is the best play possible in the in the market. Diageo, it has shown its commitment. They're and getting their own brands also. 19,000 crores they have put at an average price of 2250. They first put in at uh, 1400 if I'm not wrong. And then again at 3050 or 3030. So approximately at a 22, 2300 average cost, they have put in 19,000 crores. Now they are going to shift their existing private entities business into this particular entity. So there is no uh, question of the lack of commitment. They have cleaned up their books to 90%, I believe, or it could be 100%, but we'll know in some some amount of time if there is any further so cleanup to be done. So according to you, should be a part of anyone's portfolio. It's a structural portfolio. story. It's a structural story, and you will not get it cheap. You should see what happened once uh, Heineken took over United Breweries. We know the global valuation some of these liquor companies are commanding. Okay, final question. The buzzword right now is e-commerce. How are you betting on that trillion dollar opportunity? There are no direct plays available, in my opinion, in the market, barring an InfoEdge or a Just Dial. Um, you don't own InfoEdge or Just Dial? No, we don't own InfoEdge or Just Dial because we don't see uh, the spark that is required or the valuations are not in favor. What we have bought is Gati. It's a very innocuous way of uh, playing this opportunity. Uh, it's essentially the advantage or the key uh, differentiator between a two e-commerce guy at this point of time is the delivery. 24 hour delivery, two days delivery, being able to deliver large parcels. And if that is the thing that on, on which they are uh, competing, then Gati or for that so matter... why Gati, why not Blue Dart? Blue Dart is expensively valued. Blue Dart is a, it, a, it's, it's catering to a different market. Okay. It's catering to the parcels, smaller parcels, air delivery. Okay. So uh, e-commerce uh, is uh, fighting on discounts. Yeah. They cannot afford air delivery. And Gati is not the last mile. The last mile is probably still they doing themselves on bikes. But the main major nodal uh, going transportation to from one big city to another by road. Very quickly before we wrap any disclosures. It is very safe to assume that we have vested interest in all the stocks that we have discussed and we could be changing our opinion at any point of time. So this is not a solicitation of to, or an advice to buy or sell any stock. Okay. We appreciate your time. Glad you could join Thank us. Thank you so much Nikunj.